Good evening. The federal government today requested that we no longer call it swine flu. Instead, they want us to call it the H1N1 virus. They fear calling it swine flu somehow needlessly incriminates pigs and could hurt the pork industry. Whatever it goes by, today this new strain of flu for which there is no inoculation continued to move across this country. So far, we have confirmed cases in six states and in six countries. A lot of the cases here in New York, where today the state health commissioner said rather ominously, we know that many hundreds of students were ill with symptoms. We start off our coverage again here tonight with our chief science correspondent, Robert Bazell. Bob, no sign of slowing, apparently. Well, quite the opposite, Brian. The virus is continuing to spread throughout the country ever more rapidly. And even though most cases so far have been mild, that is starting to change. At Public School 177 in Queens, New York, worried parents came to pick up their children this afternoon. City health officials say that many students there have become sick with suspected swine flu. This is the third city school to be closed because of the disease. When I found out that the school was going to close, I started freaking out. Officials say the virus has spread among hundreds of people in New York, most but not all mild cases. The severe illness is what we are looking for very, very carefully. In New York, five people are now hospitalized with severe swine flu, while the CDC says three people in California and two in Texas have been hospitalized. I expect that we will see deaths in this country. In Northern California, Marin County confirmed two cases, and California's governor declared a statewide health emergency. Today I'm issuing an emergency proclamation. In the Midwest, a student at Notre Dame has been diagnosed with swine flu, adding Indiana to the list of affected states. At Atlanta's Hartsfield Airport, some passengers were wearing masks for their flights, although health officials say they have little value. Now you have this brand new virus that we've never seen before. That unfortunately has developed the capability of infecting a human and causing disease. To fight the emergency, the Obama administration today released $1.5 billion in emergency funds. This particular outbreak may die off naturally and we may see a resurgence again in the fall. So uh, we're in this for the long haul. A big question. Should the government make a vaccine against the new strain? It has started the process, but even if it decides to go ahead, the first doses will not be available for at least six months. And there are big problems with vaccine manufacture. This country simply does not have the capacity. We buy a lot of our vaccine for seasonal influenza from overseas, and other countries are not going to help us build up our supply of vaccine to this new frightening virus. Brian. Bob Bazell here with us tonight. Bob, thanks. And by the way, late news from Washington tonight. We now have a Health and Human Services Secretary. The Senate tonight has confirmed the president's choice of Kansas Governor Kathleen Sebelius. Now to Mexico, where they have taken a more drastic measures as additional flu cases are reported. NBC's Carrie Sanders is with us from Mexico City, where just about every group activity has now come to a halt in light of this outbreak. Hey, Carrie, good evening. Well, Brian, the signs are going up, closed for business. Under local government orders here in Mexico City, restaurants are now closed. The only thing they're allowed are delivery and takeout. The idea is to keep people from congregating together and passing the virus. It's the same reason cinemas are closed. The local zoo, museums, billiard halls, swimming pools. The idea is to keep people away from contact. It's estimated it's costing Mexico $57 million a day in lost economic activity. At the same time today, Princess Cruise Line, Carnival Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean canceled their ports of call in Mexico. This as tourists continue to try to get out and British tour operators are canceling their flights into Cancun. Meantime, health officials say confirmed the four-year-old little boy whose sample confirmed swine flu in this country. His name is Edgar Hernandez. They confirmed that he lives in Veracruz, about 12 miles from the largest pig farm in this country. It's joint owned by Virginia-based Smithfield Farm and a Mexico company. Today, Smithfield said that there is no clinical evidence that the swine flu is on that farm, and they say they're working with Mexican health authorities. 
unfortunately, Brian, that four-year-old little boy recovered and is doing just fine. All right, Kerry Sanders in Mexico City. Kerry, as you know, we have a camera crew in that town believed to be the epicenter of this. We'll have that report for you tomorrow night. Uh, so far, as we've seen, most of these cases in this country are in big urban areas. But if it comes down to it, this could be a town-by-town, -town, hand hand-to-hand fight against this new strain of flu. It may come down to the contingency planning of the good people in individual towns across the country. We learn tonight how one town is preparing from NBC's Janet Shamlian. It's the kind of place that might seem amused. Far from big city crowds, the largest gatherings here are often in a pasture. And yet in rural commerce, Texas, they're preparing for a fight. We are not going to let this event control us. We're going to control the event. At the local firehouse, it's all hands on deck. Representatives from the school, police officers, even the jail joining forces. But who's taking in that vaccine if it comes to that point and who's giving it up? Commerce has fewer than 10,000 residents, no county health department, and just a 25-bed hospital. What it does have is a plan. If it really gets bad, we have to be able to take care of ourselves. We can't be completely dependent. So they're setting up a public hotline, updating email, and choosing first responders. I don't think we're any more vulnerable than any other community, but we just need to be prepared with uh, you know, a town of our size to be ready for what might end up happening here. Among the concerns here in Commerce, it's a college town with thousands of students commuting to campus. It's a branch of Texas A&M. Good afternoon, Student Health Services. How may I help you? A university of 8,000 students where free testing started last week. They open up, they are. Yep, you got some tonsils there. They're a lot real red, and you got some red streaks. We need to swab her. Ashley Smith's test came back negative, but most here believe it's just a matter of time. One community planning not for if, but when. Janet Chamley on NBC News, Commerce Tech.